I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Sri Lanka to be followed by the distinguished representative of Monaco. Madam Chair, uh, thank you for giving me the floor. My delegation takes this opportunity to extend warm felicitations to you and the members of the Bureau on your election and assure our fullest support and cooperation during this session. My delegation aligns itself with the statement made by Pakistan on behalf of the G77 and China. Madam Chair, the 60th session of the Commission for Social Development is being convened at a juncture where the multiple impacts of the pandemic have been especially severe on the developing countries. The twin problems of access to vaccines and a reversal of development gains, even in countries where the pandemic has been relatively well managed, has placed the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development Goals at a considerable risk. Today, we find ourselves in a situation where poverty, unemployment, and social exclusion continue to be rampant and unabated across the globe. This seems to be the new normal situation that we are forced to reckon with. Despite the commitments made at the World Summit for Social Development in 1995, it is ominous that the progress achieved so far is below our expectations and many lacunas remain. The prevalent pandemic situation and the associated economic challenges poses a considerable threat to the progress of the human well-being, transcending national boundaries and affecting the parameters of social development in all countries. Madam Chair, loss of livelihoods of individuals due to the pandemic-induced economic downturn has been devastating. As a country that has depended on the tourist industry, the Sri Lankan tourism industry was severely affected by the pandemic, although it is heartening to witness early signs of a recovery now. While certain sectors have adapted with innovative strategies and other sectors such as the ICT sector have witnessed a sharp upturn due to the new adaptations that have become necessary, many sectors, especially services, have been negatively affected. Madam Chair, the Secretary General has submitted in his report our common agenda and in his briefing on the work of the organization, the depth and substance of the issues that face us today. Successfully overcoming the triple issues of vaccine inequity, climate change, and overhaul of the morally bankrupt international financial system are a sine qua non if the new normal is going to be better than the old ways of the past. The fact that the two of these issues fall under the scope and ambit of this commission makes the deliberations of this August Assembly all the more relevant, especially as we focus on strengthening multilateral approaches to overcoming the current crisis. Madam Chair, in this context, the two priority themes of inclusive and resilient recovery from COVID-19 for sustainable livelihoods, well-being and dignity for all, eradicating poverty and hunger in all its forms and dimensions to achieve the 2030 agenda and strengthening multilateralism to deliver well-being and uh, with regard to the first theme of recovery from the pandemic, we believe that vaccine equity is at the heart of all recovery efforts, assisted by our bilateral partners and the COVAX facility. Sri Lanka has been very successful in its vaccination program. By January 2022, Sri Lanka fully vaccinated over 90% of its eligible population, more than 63% of its total population, and more than 22% of the vaccinated were administered with the third booster dose. Currently, we have started vaccinating the children aged 12 to 15 to face the looming threat of Omicron, of the Omicron variant. Sri Lanka's rapid progress of vaccinations was enabled by the coordinated efforts between healthcare workers, the armed forces, police personnel, government servants, and elected officials. As an attempt to share this experience, Sri Lanka intends to establish a regional knowledge hub to facilitate exchange of lessons learned from COVID-19 and support countries to recover better in collaboration with the WHO. Madam Chair, poverty and hunger are the twin outcomes of not just the pandemic situation and the new normal it has created, but also of the inequities and power relations that continue to characterize our world today. 
the failure to, to, to come together with a common agenda, even at this late stage, would endanger of a common future. Even as a developing country, Sri Lanka's achievements on ensuring a high human and social development of its people is a well-known fact and has been acknowledged by many quarters. Its ranking in the UNDP Human Development Index, which currently stands at 72 out of 189 countries, is indicative of this achievement. Eradicating hunger and extreme poverty have been the focus of all governments since independence. During the pandemic, the government of Sri Lanka adhered to a number of measures to ensure a consistent food supply to its people. To achieve this target, expanding the social protection programs to protect people living in lockdown or isolated areas was a vital step. Sri Lanka had to provide cash and in-kind grants to the vulnerable groups and the most affected sectors of the economy during the lockdown period, in addition to taking care of lactating and pregnant mothers by ensuring home delivery goods. The government also coordinated efforts with the World Food Program to provide take-home rations to the primary school children during the closure of the schools. Madam Chair, Sri Lanka considers sustainability as a cornerstone of its national policy framework. We believe that this experience would be a catalyst in boosting Sri Lanka's confidence towards addressing the challenges to get on track with the full implementation of the 2030 agenda. Sri Lanka believes that a holistic policy approach with near to long-term strategies must be taken to ensure food security and eradicate poverty and to withstand future shocks. As we return to the new normal realities, it is imperative that we build resilience through hope. Sri Lanka remains committed to working together with the international community in a spirit of true cooperation, generosity, goodwill, mutual respect to foster a better and more sustainable future for all humanity. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development sets out an ambitious global vision to reach and empower all, including the underprivileged and vulnerable persons. Sri Lanka, Madam Chair, remains steadfast to realize this aspiration and to use social development as a tool to achieve this target. I thank you, Madam Chair. I thank the distinguished representative of Sri Lanka for his statement. I now